It is known that gales of magical force flow into the world from the far north, and most of these energies divide into the eight winds of magic as they gust and disperse across the lands. These are the forces, when properly channeled by the capable battle wizards of the Empire, that can be made into healing enchantments or even a devastating fireball. Some of these energies, however, remain as dark magic, pulling and eddying in places of great emotional disturbance. Usually the greatest concentrations of dark magic reside in battlefields, mass graves, sacrificial stones, and even disease-ridden settlements. As such, necromancers, vampires, and practitioners of dark magic are often attracted to these morbid places. The old world has been the scene of many conflicts and fierce battles for thousands of years. Below the peaty soil can be found the remains of entire long lost regiments. The skeletons and buried bodies of countless soldiers, once proud warriors clad in the armaments and equipment of innumerable houses and origins. Their remains resting in unmarked graves. When necromancers and vampires seek to expand their dominion over a territory or gain power, they then practice great rituals to awaken the rotting flesh and bones, to make hordes of moaning zombies that walk only to fulfill the wishes of their master. A tragedy befalls the Empire. A full patrol force sent to the border of Sylvania had gone missing. No reports had arrived from them in weeks, nor how they met their fate. An incident of this magnitude on the borders of Sylvania hadn't been reported in quite a while, and concern grew as time passed without word from the presumably lost soldiers of the Empire. Long conversations and heated discussions were had as to what the next course of action should be. An expeditionary force of men was almost sent to investigate the fate of their comrades. But this approach was met with some resistance, as Sterland was in dire need of manpower and fresh soldiers for the active conflict with the Greenskins in the south. The orcs and goblins were mounting up pressure quickly and more men were needed urgently to counter their increasingly brutal assaults. To send a regiment to Sylvania now was to spend manpower where it wasn't needed the most. A small war band of mercenaries and hired guns was also considered, but the recent increased sightings of strange creatures and ghostly apparitions near the border of Sylvania seemed to indicate that an active necromancer could be responsible for the disappearance of the lost soldiers and the increased flow of dark magic. It was decided that the best course of action would be to send a properly prepared and readily equipped specialist to look deeper into these matters. So it was that a prominent witch hunter Wolfram Webb was tasked to go into the depths of the damned province to seek for the vile being responsible for the latest attack. A possible escalation of conflict from Sylvania could not be allowed to happen. Not while the province of Stirland already had its hands full of the Greenskins raiding from the south. The witch hunter was the right tool for the job. This episode was chosen by you, 
on a poll we recently did on YouTube. With more than 6,000 votes, the chosen story was the one that now leads us into the damned lands of Sylvania. There are many stories still waiting to be told, but we will begin today with the short story of Wolfram Webb. We thank you for watching, and we hope you continue to enjoy this episode. If you're not a witch, you have nothing to fear. The witch hunter is but a humble servant, but not of mere men. The hunter hunts in the service of Sigmar, and in his name, a hunter would burn the Empire in its entirety if he felt the need to. But there are those who even amongst the cadres of hunters are considered low lives. Hired hands who are no more than specialized mercenaries when compared to a sanctioned Templar of Sigmar, such as Wolfram Webb. There are few who do not fear the hunter, and practitioners of any kind of magic are the ones that fear them the most. For all magical arts outside of the sanctioned walls of the Colleges of Magic are considered witchcraft, and are punishable by a fiery death at the stake. A grim fate. Even if they are dreaded by the common folk, they cannot help but admire the deeds done by such servants of Sigmar. For without them, surely the old world would have completely turned to the darkness of chaos by now. But the hunter does not hunt alone. He brings God himself with him. For he is clad in the most holy of attire, his leather coat, doused by holy water and reinforced by prayers. It protects him against the lower levels of the dark arts. His chainmail and plated shoulders have holy scriptures engraved in them. The humble torch is a hunter's best friend, for darkness dwells where evil festers and fire can cleanse even the most corrupt of beings and light the darkest of paths. Short swords, both of steel and silver, are extremely useful, for they are versatile weapons, alongside hand crossbows and pistols that carry blessed ammunition. All weapons are exercised and then blessed this is all part of a witch hunter's arsenal, for they are the chosen to cleanse heresy from the world. It is not uncommon for hunters to carry heavier weapons, especially when in a team, such as temple blessed flamberges, repeating rifles, halberts, and so on. For the hunter, is proficient in all forms of combat that might vanquish the unclean. They are trained in body, mind, and spirit, and they are tooled to deal with any foe, be they undead, mutant, heretic, or demon. Faith, steel, and gunpowder accompany the witch hunter wherever he goes, and evil shan't survive for very long. There are many other items that can be used against the undead, and Volfrem carried a variety of these items in his equipment. Garlic is said to be one of his non-negotiables, for as strange as it sounds, the walking dead avoid the pungent aroma, and Volfrem uses it on many occasions as a tool to bait out any reanimated corpses nearby. Rowan wood is another item that is valued by the witch hunters, 
this type of supposedly divine ember, is used to craft weapons that are extremely powerful against undead creatures. In fact, it is commonly known as witchwood for its effectiveness. To add strength and extra lethality to a weapon, many witch hunters also add silver to their bullets, the tips of their swords, arrowheads, knives, and other weapons. The silver's purity is said to be anathema to the undead, and as such it can be very effective when used in combination with blessings and seals from grand theogenists. The variety of weapons and tools that make for a fully equipped witch hunter are vast and varied. As a light against an unlit corridor, the witch hunter walks straight and unwavering against the darkness. Lonesome moorlands and craggy hills punctuate the yellow-leafed woods, the almost uninhabitable forests of Sylvania. A place that is said to have been left forgotten by the gods. A grim land where the stench of death chokes the air and the feeling of unrest is almost palpable. The gloomy clouds and mist that shroud these lands is said to be haunted, charged with invisible dark magic that can be used by terrible beings that lurk there hidden in the shadows. Although Sylvania is technically part of the Empire, the land is so shrouded in mystery and fear that no sane being would consider making their home there. It is mostly considered a separate realm from all other provinces. And the legends of powerful vampire lords that lived there still haunt the lands in the form of whispers, nightmares, and ghost stories told by the peasants. Wolfram Webb walked under the heavy shadow of the massive trees that crowned the road that led deeper into these cursed lands. His icons and emblems of faith shining against the night as if defiant of the darkness that surrounded the witch hunter. His first stop was a small settlement in the Sylvanian border. A small tavern with dim lights was the biggest building there, and it had the most activity by night. And by that, it is meant that only a small number of farmers regularly gathered there, for it was a small settlement indeed. The mere presence of Wolfram was heavily noted in the tavern. Despite his best efforts to minimize it, some peasants lowered their heads, while some others made a notable effort not to pan and stare at the visitor. After concluding that no being there was tainted or corrupted, the witch hunters sat at the edge of a long table and started some small talk with a single, lonely man. After a couple of hours and some well-spent coin for about three or four rounds of the mediocre beer available here, Wolfram had his table full. How these men drank such a distasteful beverage was something the witch hunter could not understand. Despite that, questions were posed, and some of the answers he heard that night could be of value. The next morning he continued his journey. Generally speaking, walking by day always felt safer in Sylvania, as the undead creatures that often roam these lands cannot stand the brightness of the sun. Direct sunlight burns them, and so they hide in caverns, catacombs, and abandoned ruins, 
waiting for the night to cover it all once again. Wolfram Webb felt safe regardless of the time of day or of any creature that could be dwelling nearby. His training and experience had taught him to always keep his guard up and never underestimate the intentions and capabilities of the enemy. He was prepared for any encounter and any challenge that the suspected necromancer could present. And with the clues he had gathered, he was certain he was going in the right direction. As the darkness of night covered the sky above, the witch hunter stopped in his tracks. As he walked further into the province, an unnatural, heavy silence settled in. His own senses alert at any sign of movement or sound. The buildings near him seemed to be abandoned, but the windows showed a subtle glow from time to time. Someone was there. Or at least, something was there. A man with gray skin and bloodied eyes appeared from behind the building. His hooded robes casted a shadow over his facial features. The eyes glowed red. It stared at the witch hunter directly. Wolfram Webb stared back at it, knowing in his heart that this was a creature that needed to be burned with fire. He gave just one step forward. The tall, hooded figure raised his hands, and with them, the wind suddenly turned cold. Below the necromancer, a crack erupted from the soil. And from below, two monstrous wolves emerged. Their aspect was feral, their eyes yellow, and they uttered an unnatural growl. Broken bones and gaping rib cages could be seen from afar. These were long dead wolves, but brought back to something resembling life. They looked miserable but dangerous nonetheless. They charged immediately, without holding back, with no signs of fear or sense of self-preservation. A bang was heard, and the first of the wolves fell head first into the ground. No growl, no yelp of pain. The undead animal just tumbled and twitched for a few seconds before it finally stopped moving. Wolfram sheathed his still-smoking gun as the second wolf was already in the air. With a swift dash, the witch hunter evaded his attacker, and the wolf passed just inches away from him. As the feral wolf landed, it quickly turned on its bony heels to face Wolfram once again. But it was already too late. Wolfram was already moving towards the necromancer, his hand holding the silver knife he had just used to slice the wolf's spine in twain. The wolf tried advancing once again, but its legs crumpled beneath it, and the half-alive, half-dead wolf stumbled to the ground not dead, but unable to move. It howled and made guttural sounds as it struggled to crawl towards the witch hunter, powered only by the ill will of its master. The witch hunter carried a blessed crossbow made of master-crafted rowan wood, adorned with no less than four purity seals and armed with sanctified ammunition. He raised the weapon and leveled it at the necromancer's head.
Witch hunters are devoted to cleansing the lands of the Empire from all taint, and to bring Sigmar's justice to all corners of the world, carrying the edict of the great Theogenist himself. They carry the divine right to execute any unholy beings that may infiltrate their sacred lands. As proof of his divine work, Wolfram carried the severed head of the necromancer back to the Temple of Sigmar. His work was complete. On this channel, we are putting together narrative Total War cinematic battles and Warhammer lore videos. A special thank you goes to our Patreon supporters who help us in the making of more content. You can also join Patreon and earn extra perks while supporting the videos to come. Find the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe, and thank you for watching. See you on the next one.